Hello and welcome, my name's Andrew and in this video we're going to be looking at the navigation and doing a bit of a user interface overview of Affinity Photo on the iPad Pro. Let's get into it. So now I'm going to talk a bit about the user interface of Affinity Photo. So just load up the app, just takes a few seconds to load up. And here's one I made earlier, just a Ghostbusters Afterlife poster. So it's the original poster. And if you had seen my last video, we've got Slimer here, who I just simply placed in the middle of the poster. This is Affinity Photo with a document opened. At the left hand side, we've got a toolbar of all the different photo tools we can use. In Affinity Photo, there's these things called personas. If you come from a Photoshop background, you were saying, what's, what's a persona? A persona is like different work environments, different workspaces. The personas are up at the top. We have the photo persona. Then we have the selections persona. When you go into a different persona, a different workspace, the toolbars change on the left hand side. Then we've got the liquify persona, the develop persona, the tone mapping persona, and the export persona. To be honest, the export, tone mapping, and develop, I don't use that much. Liquify I use sometimes, but certainly the selection and the photo, that's where I spend nearly all my time. And if you're using Affinity Photo, chances are you'll be in these two personas more than any of the other ones too. This arrow here is the home button. Click here and you go back to the home of the Finley photo. We'll click back in the document. This is a wee document where document button where we can export and do different things like set up grids, set up snapping, canvas size, orientation, whatnot. The three dots here is the commands tool. And again, this tool will change depending on what persona you're in. So we've got different things here. If I go into the selections persona, you can see that these here commands have changed too. This toolbar, the left-hand side toolbar, the personas, and then we've got Affinity Photo calls these studios. Studios like the layer studio. Again, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you'll know about layers, clicking on this layer. This here, the arrow is the move tool. Again, just like Photoshop, we're gonna move this. Two fingers on the screen is undo. Three fingers is redo. Very, very good shortcut, fantastic shortcut. Uh, so hit two fingers back. So that's our different layers. To select a layer, simply click on it and then we can move it around wherever we want to. If you want to select both layers, simply drag your finger across the layer and both layers will be selected. You can see both are highlighted and you can see both boxes are highlighted too, or both are outlined. And then we can move about two fingers to do that. And if you want to click one again, just click one and away we go. So different studios, this here's the color studio where we have a color picker. You can pick your colors. There's different things, brushes, adjustment layer, filters, layer effects, text and, and we can go on down we just go on down while we're here metadata hardly hardly ever in this channels sometimes have to go in here transform very good studio to, to know navigation again i'm not in much with this with navigation you can go zoom in 200 percent 100 percent fit the scale you can rotate it but with two fingers pinching in zooms in Pinching out, zooms out. Uh, two fingers will move it, or if you're on the hand tool, one finger will move it. But the navigation studio, I don't really use much because two fingers pinching in and out. And if you want to rotate, simply rotate your fingers and it will rotate the canvas too. Macros, hardly ever in it. Assets, never in it. Stock, never in that. And then history, sometimes it's nice to go back and see or change the history. You can also change this wee slider and that'll be, it's just a nice wee visual, visual way of moving between the, your history actions. So that's the studios on the right hand side. Down here, little question mark. If you hit that, it'll just tell you the names of all these different tools, which is great if you're doing a YouTube video like this. Sometimes I forget the exact name of what to call things. Other than that, I'm, I never press this button, but uh, it is good if you're doing a tutorial on user interface and on Affinity Photo. There is another toolbar called the contextual toolbar, which I'm not going to call it again because 
contextual toolbar. I don't know why they call it the contextual toolbar. If we go into the paintbrush here, the contextual toolbar or the bottom toolbar here comes up with a variety of options where you can choose the width, the opacity, the flow, the hardness, the color, and, and different things. Two fingers to delete. If we go into the eraser, this toolbar changes depending upon what tool you go in. Again, this is different from Photoshop. The paint bucket, again, it will change it. The crop, depending what tool you hit here or in the selections persona, will change the, the toolbar at the bottom here. Just before I wrap up here, we'll go to the Layer Studio. The Layer Studio is where we were spending a lot of time. If we click this wee icon, it then takes us into some properties of that layer where we can rename this layer if we want. We can change the opacity. We can change the different blend options. We can click on this arrow, or if you click in the middle, you can quickly scroll down. This is very, it's very, very handy just to quickly scroll to see what some of the blend options are. We'll maybe go to, just for this, and we'll maybe do multiply and then click and multiply. You can lock this layer so you won't be able to move it. If you go back, you will see the lock icon there. We'll go back into it, unlock it. We can solo it, which, which is really nice if you've got lots and lots of layers. And then there's a few other different things we can change. I'll be going in more in the layer, in the layer studio on a different tutorial. But for now, I think that's us. And there you have it. Hopefully you learned something new in this video. Please feel free to like this video. That would mean a lot. Please subscribe. There's going to be more videos coming out about Affinity Photo on the iPad, more training videos, more diving deeper into different tools and different features and how I use Affinity Photo. Feel free to leave a comment. I read every single one of them. I reply to them if I can. So I look forward to reading those. For any videos you would like me to make, that would be great too. Please leave them in the comment section. And until the next time, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.